Hello and welcome and today's video I'm going to be sharing with you the best bang for your buck arc tame so without further ado let's get straight into it. In at number 10 I've decided to put the Derry as I find this is just generally a really nice arc creature to have and being quite a simple knockout tame and relatively easy to trap with no issues whatsoever and with obviously basically just one step in the tame method which is knock it out you could say two if you say feed it but on top of that it really is nothing else and it is just such a versatile creature it is a great one for doing the dragon boss fight on the island obviously as it's particularly harsh to carnivores and this being a herbivore which also deals loads and loads of damage it does work very effectively in that given scenario and on top of that my favorite attribute about this creature is it's great fiber gathering often you can find loads of herbivores out there that will gather berries for days but no fiber obviously the moss chops does exist as well depends if you get lucky if you will tame one of those another great suggestion although maybe not the bang for your buck arc tame considering that they can be a little bit of a pain to tame if you don't find the right ones and you know especially if you're playing unofficial it can be pretty frustrating sometimes but they're great fiber gatherers too just i really like the way the theory does it and the theory in my eyes is quite easy to tame yes you do have to be level 69 nice to get it but that really isn't that bad continuing on i have decided to put the aloe on this list and i find loads of people really do like this one and there might be a bit of a disagreement with what comes later on the list but that is just my personal preference we'll get to it when we get to it i want to talk about the aloe this is a very nice relatively easy to find carnivore it isn't all too rare because that does play into the fact that by bang for your buck i basically mean tames which are really great but easy to tame i felt that was a bit of a long-winded title so i decided to change it for the purpose of the video and i think it works better either way they're not the hardest to find just search on any mountainous region really on the island ridiculously easy to find in the highlands biome on ragnarok though you should have no issues whatsoever they'll usually be in packs of three and the highest level will be will be determined by the one which has the alpha pack buff and that's probably the one which you're going to want to tame or you can just tame all three as long as the other two aren't really low levels as well and then you can instantly have yourself a pack of aloes sometimes no matter the level it is still worth it just to get yourself a pack of aloes to get that pack buff as yes you do need three to make a pack of aloes and i'm pretty sure in arc a pack of anything and once you've got it it is a very powerful nice easy to use carnivore that is versatile very mobile very efficient to use I might have already said that and they do a heck of a lot of damage and the bleed ability as well sadly that doesn't affect bosses in this case but still you know there's another creature on this list which does that exact thing and it's there for said reason they still have the bleed ability though for all other creatures and a great boss fighting ones because of their reasonably high health quite nice mobility and very high damage especially considering their size and ease of taming so the spinosaurus an all-time favorite of mine and i was contemplating to put the rex here instead i guess there's a brief honorable mention for it but i always did prefer this creature and i still do prefer it and i use it in pretty much any scenario where you might want to use a rex instead which is boss fighting scenarios i just love this creature for them they are just so much more mobile than a rex and they tend to do a little bit more damage than a rex as well and once i bred them up a little bit and got some health mutations their health is pretty much incomparable yes you could probably get some higher health on a rex but still that health is easily high enough for pretty much any boss fight in the game apart from obviously all of the bosses on extinction just use a stego for the forest titan which i've never actually done before but apparently um that uh, the tlc ability it got the impaling is absolutely op whoever said that in the comments thanks for the tip the next time i do the forest titan i will definitely use said method and obviously you use the, the quetzal for the desert titan as well and you could use giggles and carcodonsauruses for the ice titan possibly not but um the ice titan I, i've usually used something like a mech or something around those things either way talking about the spine again and not some other creatures that i like to use or have been suggested for me to use on extinction bosses the spino is that creature incredibly mobile has a tlc as well it's got the hydration buff makes it pretty great for the motor it also 
uh, can turn 360 on the spot, deals a heck of a lot of damage, like I've said, more than the Rex in the cases that I've seen, and they're not too difficult to tame. Yes, a Rex is easier, but I'm thinking you're getting a lot more value with this creature than a Rex, at least in my opinion. I also make some quite great underwater caving creatures as well, if that's something you really consider, because on the islands, all the underwater caves are pretty massive, so they really are a bang for your buck tame, in my opinion. And at number seven, I've decided to put the Kano, and this is where some of the dispute may happen of like why am I putting the Kano above the Aloe? Well, in my opinion, the Kano is much easier to tame. On ASA, that makes little difference because of the baby taming methods, I know, but you know, killing a Kano is still a lot easier than killing an Aloe, and I find they are very effective creatures. This is a lot of nostalgia playing in, of course, but I do have to factor in my opinions to this list, and the Kano is just an opinion of which I have, which I find is just so strong for me that I simply have to put this creature on the list and I do recommend like just as quite a first carnival for PvE players for PvP players I've honestly got no idea and admit I I admit that I have no idea what's going on with PvP arc but for PvE arc I would say that the Kano is quite a nice creature to have you can chill around on it you can definitely get some work done with killing some creatures harvesting all kinds of meat and hide and in the early game it really is effective and you can even do some bosses with it as well if you want to they do the bleed ability not to bosses of course but to everything else that you'll find on the way and they're pretty mobile pretty fast and i really do like their size similar to the megalosaurus as well which is quite a nice creature the only reason why i didn't put it on this list is they do spawn in caves and that is a little bit too much for me to put them on this list but i guess
but then once you've done it, you got yourself a Wyvern for a much cheaper tame method and with better abilities. The RG, what a creature, really. It cannot be disrespected for all of its attributes, and it has been here for a long while, and it has kept us satisfied, at least me satisfied, for an awful long while, and I love these creatures. And with a very simple trap and some trank arrows, you're gonna have no issue with taming these things whatsoever. Maybe it can be a little bit awkward to get them into a trap, especially on ASA, but I find it really isn't too much of an issue, and I can do it with relative ease and no difficulty. I did a little bit in the beginning when I started using traps to tame things, which was actually way too recently and i think that was about three or four years ago previously to that i would just or prior to that i should say uh, i just just knock these things out just in the open air and like chase them around on a griffin whenever those came out or just you know hoped and waited but the trap method is definitely a lot more efficient a lot better obviously and with those the, the rg just being such a great creature it does deserve the list of course it has a portable smithy as a saddle great if you're doing caving you don't want to go back all the way to your base just have some smelted metal in its inventory and then boom you can repair all your metal items you can carry a wealth of creatures as well they've got weight reduction things like metal crystal and obsidian so if you pair it with an anki and a dodic or either or really because you can't carry both at the same time you can get yourself loads of metal crystal stone and obsidian and even more flint and wood and that and all of that they also do have a nice region buff as well if you kill something and eat said dead body it will come in a lot more handy than you might expect at number three we have got the baryonyx and i really do love this creature it is just so deserving of this spot in my opinion it is the ideal caving creature for me and with a simple knockout tame like this it really does deserve to be on the bang for your buck arc tames it is uh, the only real downside I should say to its tame method is the fact that it spawns in the swamp biome and it can be particularly hostile especially with running gnathers and all of those things and obviously you do need fish to tame this thing but I don't find that is too much of an issue as pseudocamps are very abundant from all of my exploration of the art map you really shouldn't worry about that too much and then once you've tamed one you've got yourself an extremely agile mobile tame which is capable of just an awful lot it is the best caving creature like i've said yes you can see shadow mate is great as well but the fact that this is so much easier to tame and a lot more accessible to people considering the map that it spawns on it really just takes the crown all the time and it still does not fail in the water the shadow mane is a great underwater creature as well but the baryonyx definitely can do it as well obviously it's a bit of a, a, a pescivore in a way it eats fish you would expect it to swim very well and it can sign creatures up the size of a megalodon with its second attack very nice neat creature at number two we have got the dinonychus and you might be saying well the dinonychus is much harder to tame and it's not just a simple knockout one well yes but i find if you have yourself a grappling hook at hand or some kind of basic flyer then this one really isn't either essentially go to the chalk cliffs on bug a free dlc so very accessible to everyone apart from i think switch and mobile players at the moment not sure with the dlc situation for switch players at the moment do you have vagware or not comment that down below but mobile players of course won't you know what no lobby like hopefully that gets revamped for all of those people waiting on it but yes then once you've done that you're going to want to raise that egg and it can be done with just some torches to start off with unofficial yes it will be a pain because it will take a lot longer but i find if you're playing on single player this really isn't too bad of a tame and your first one you don't need to worry about imprints and all of that you could just get one and you can still reek a lot of the benefits because you're probably not going to be doing bosses when you're like level 40 level 50 it is a little bit later on but if you get that bit of a grind on in the early stages on Valguero you can get these things pretty quickly within five hours even if you're like really going for it and if you actually if you're really going for it you could probably get it in less than two hours depending on what your your rates are for your raising because i am factoring all of that into the time as well once you've tamed one they can deal bleed damage to bosses which is just so op they're great traveling mounts they can scale any kind of wall vertical cliff they take no fall damage they have the pack buff and in my opinion they're not too difficult to tame it just takes a little bit of effort but then apart from that you're going to get yourself the best bang for your buck apart from the creature which is next on the list and at number one we have got the maywing Considering that their saddle is unlocked at level 18 and they can be tamed with some trank arrows and just a couple of signs to trap them in, then these do have to really top the list. They are the best travelling mounts out there, hands down, nothing can beat them. They are fast, agile 
gliders. Yes, not flyers, but still actually with the Maywing, if you get the technique right, you don't need an awful lot of elevation, if any really, to keep them gliding over those flatter planes. I have got it in a bit more of a higher gradient area just for the purpose of the B-Rock, kind of makes it look a little bit more impressive with everything kind of gliding around. But the fact they're unlocked at level 18 in terms of their saddle level, it is absolutely insane. And you'll find with Gen 2, a lot of creatures are very OP and this is actually, I'm pretty sure the only Gen 2 creature on the list, but it really is the best bang for your buck. Octane, just so easy and so effective. The best traveling mount out there, like I've said. They also do act as a portable feeding trough, so for you people that do loads of breeding out there, these are gonna come real handy. The Gigantoraptor will help out as well, but maybe not quite as much as the Mewing, especially considering how much easier the Mewing is to tame. I know I keep going on about it, but it really is so easy. And they can also glide across the top of the water, not the worst ones in the world, and gather berries too. But anyway, that is the end of today's video, and I really hope that you all have enjoyed this one. As always, comment down below what is your best bang for your buck arc tame. And if you didn't agree with this, then I would like you to put your 10 down below in the comments. I'll see you all later.